everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here and you like what you see, subscribe or like this video to see more. So today I'm going to tell you all about my diagnosis story. And I know everyone's diagnosis story is a little bit different. It takes some people a long time to figure out that they have FA. Some people not as long. I was lucky enough that it really didn't take very long to figure out what exactly I had. So I kind of wanted to walk you through it and let you know how it was diagnosed, how FA was brought up and all that kind of stuff. It started on New Year's Eve. Just was not feeling well and I didn't know what it was. So my sister went and told my mom, hey, she's laying on the couch and she isn't feeling well. Something is wrong. So my mom came and checked on me and I didn't know how to explain exactly what I was feeling, but I had this like sharp pain in my neck and it was going down my arm and it was not really a sharp pain, but it was like a burning pain. And so I didn't really know what it was. And so I told her all of this and I said, I think my heart might be racing. And so my mom is a nurse and so she went and got a pulse ox that we had and she checked my heart rate and it was like 280 beats per minute. And so she freaked out. 12 year old is having a heart attack on New Year's Eve. So me and my mom went to the hospital and they basically treated me as if I was having a heart attack. So they push fluids. I don't really know exactly the protocol. But, um, they basically got my heart rate down to around 140 and they sent me home. From that point on, I kind of just went downhill and basically was not eating, could barely sleep, was in a ton of pain. So I was exhausted. Mind you, my heart rate was still at 140, 150 for this whole time. So I was depleted of any energy that I did have. And we had no idea what this could be. So after all that, I the emergency room referred me to a cardiologist. So I went to see him. And he um, kind of mentioned something about maybe an autonomic nervous system disorder or something like that. And that's why I had this episode. But he didn't really explain why I was going downhill so fast and why I was continuing to go downhill. So after we went to see him, I was rapidly declining. So I went to my pediatrician and the pediatrician was amazing and she ran a whole bunch of tests and said, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. She had been my pediatrician since I was born and so she had taken care of me. And she was really, really concerned. So she sent me to Children's in Dallas and they basically assessed all of my symptoms, you know, had a neurologist come in and they basically told me and my parents that I had no form of attacks yet and I was still declining at this point. I went back to my pediatrician. He referred me to a neurologist. Um, I think I had every test run on me. Every test that was ever like made was run. I had blood tests. I had brain scans. I had everything to try to figure out what was going on. Um, and then I had, at the neurology appointment, I was scheduled for an EMG, which is a nerve test. I will tell you that was the most painful test that I've ever had done. It was excruciating. It was just my mom and I in the room and the doctor who was doing the test. And he looked at my mom and then he looked at me and then he looked back at the computer and he said I think it might be FA my mom said what is FA and he said something we don't want her to have 
He quickly corrected himself and said that it could be a vitamin E deficiency, which mimics Friedrich's ataxia, because he saw the look on my mom and I's face after he said it. So, we ran tests to figure out what it was. The vitamin E deficiency test came back, I think within like two days, and it was negative. I didn't really ask my parents what it was. I didn't really think about it too much until I was diagnosed with it. And then the day I was diagnosed, I was... I remember it like it was yesterday. First reaction was, am I never going to be able to brush my hair again? Because at that point, I still wasn't able to brush my hair or do anything like that because I was so weak and I had no energy. Um, so, that, so I had never um, done any research of what FA was prior to being told that I had it. Then I looked it up with my mom the night that I was diagnosed and I read all the symptoms and everything and I didn't cry but I definitely internalized a lot of emotions. My parents kind of put me on a plethora of um, antioxidants and supplements. And when I was diagnosed with it, I really just wanted to focus on getting back to where I was. I didn't really know everything that, F that went along with FA. Um, so I was really trying to get back to um, the point of being myself again and that summer I went to physical therapy like I said I was on antioxidants all that kind of stuff and I and I got to a point where I felt normal I guess I never really got to normal again and for the next six years I didn't talk about FA or I didn't want to think about it and I thought that if I did that that it wouldn't exist and it wasn't real so it's taken me this long to realize that FA is not going away, it is a real thing, and I basically had two options. I could sit and pity and wallow and feel bad for myself, or I could live my life the way I wanted to. And I could raise awareness for a disease that has no cure treatment, and so people know about it, and so that's what I have decided to do. And, and I really hope that I can help people by doing that. That was my diagnosis story. I know it was kind of all over the place, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you found it helpful in your situation. And if you want to see more, subscribe and like this video. And I'll see you guys next time. What are you doing? I'm recording a video. The can this be in the bloopers? Thing. Yeah. You have to do something funny. <laughs> I feel like I have that like after pool glow. Yeah, it's cute. You look really tan. She's the best. Like and subscribe.